Okay, so I I think, um, in my opinion, this the use of fourth wall breaks in this show is the best version of them we've ever had. I like them more than Deadpool's now because it's it's gotten to the point of where they're openly getting ready for what they know what everyone's going to bitch at, and she addresses it at the beginning of every episode. Yep. And here's the best part. There are some chuds out there who still don't understand this. And they... Um, okay, so you know, you know that, that meme from Into the Spider-Verse where, where um, Peter B. Parker tells Miles Morales, oh, now th oh this is just pretty standard stuff. This is, this is where, uh, where, kill, where, um, where Fisk says, uh, so what do you do? It's like... Um, He's like, oh, I'm, oh, this is the part where you do this, and then, and then, um, Wilson Fisk's like, hey, so what do you do this? He's basically, he's basically predicting the reaction, and yeah, that meme could be applied here because I'm seeing, I'm seeing all of the stereotypical responses of, oh, this episode is filler, it didn't mean anything. Like, what does this have to do with uh, the plot? This has everything to do with the plot. Mm -hmm. It does. Lest, lest we forget, this is Jennifer Walters' show. It's not Wong's. It's not Daredevil. It's not. It's not even Bruce's show. No. It's Jen's show. Yes. And I love how the episode is called "Just Jen." Just Jen. I love how she even got a "Just Jen Attorney at Law" title card. <laughs> they, they've been doing such a good job with with the title cards in all of this. Yeah, and it's like. They need to realize Jen is figure. This is the first time where they've literally had outside of having a dual personality, which what they had with um, uh, Moon Knight. This is a person trying to figure out what the hell they actually are now. It's, and it's, it's, what it's parts very, they're okay with. It, it's very much like she's going through an identity crisis. But, un, but unlike her cousin, you know, Je Jen is She-Hulk, mm -hmm. but the world doesn't really see it that way. Yeah, it seems like She-Hulk happens to be Jen every now and then. But, yeah, it's... And it's like, I knew immediately what it was going to be. It's that, like, she she got the point of where she's like, she's accepting of She-Hulk, which is what we got in the last episode. But... She did this because she wants to let everyone still know that, guess what? Jen Walters is still pretty okay, despite the fact that I'm okay with being She-Hulk. I, myself, am still pretty awesome. And I could have, I could show this to all of my nephews, who the oldest one is 13, and all of them would understand that. I have people on my Twitter that are older than me and I'm at the ripe old age of 31 that are misunderstanding the purpose of this episode. And I cannot for the life of me understand why they're let, let let's let's say this is the point. This this is this is like the audience. They are <laughs> okay, just it's gone. And it it's it, it is the dogpiling of this, where it was like, as soon as they found out that Daredevil was going to be in it, they don't care what's on the in-between. And they're more pissed off at the fact that they showed his helmet last episode and he wasn't in this episode. They showed plot about Jen in yeah. this episode. This, Out back to her personal issues, they're finally getting a little bit further into who the hell wants her blood. By the way, there's a really cool Easter egg. Um... So this this like this hate group um on online is called um intelligentsia yeah. in the com in the comics this is a group that has like all of the criminal minds on earth it has leader modok mad thinker red ghost and mm. wizard i've like, and, never heard of them and I, and i guess uh doom was in there at one point that makes sense i seriously have never heard of them till now that's cool though, because um, you and me talked about it 
for however many of these episodes. And we haven't since the last one. They're, excuse my French, fucking finally bringing the thinker back. He's going to be in, the, in, in Sam Wilson's Captain America movie. I, I am so happy to have Leader back. <laughs> that blew my mind. I'm like, finally, they have a purpose. Yeah, it's it's crazy how they have been ever ever since Civil War. They have been slowly dripping in um, pieces from the Incredible Hulk. They have, and like part of me was like, "What, what on God's green earth is Sam gonna have to do with the Thinker? Where are you tying that?" And then I'm like, "The entire the thing is called New World Order." And then now we have this intelligentsia thing where it's a big group of smart supervillains that are likely going to be trying to screw with people. And they're a database that they're going to try and set up how they run things. New World Order makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So that could be really freaking cool if they're going to run down that route. That gets me even more unbelievably excited than I was for... By the way, hi, Manny. Hi. Um, and that gets me even more excited... For that movie but um yeah Get, getting uh, getting back to this episode um there <laughs> there is a little part of me that feels bad for jen because you know oh, she, was, she, was, <laughs> she, she was invited to this wedding out of obligation and then once she's there she's basically treated like dog shit apps and to the point of where she's walking down the aisle with a dog I, I will admit, Jonathan is a good boy. He is a good boy, but it reached 90s sitcom levels of, oh, here's the other dumb thing you get to do. <laughs> it's like, there, and it's like, it fits because they're, this is a sitcom. At its heart, they are trying to pull off a sitcom with this. And, and it worked for that. You very much had the story where Jen is being treated like trash when she's trying to make people still believe that she could just be Jen. She just had an episode where she is fully embraced that She-Hulk is a part of her. And then when she goes to some place to just try and be herself, she gets treated like absolute garbage. She's like, no, don't do She-Hulk around here. So it's like she's learning that no matter what, people are not going to like her. There's going to be situations where she's just not going to win now, which is what Bruce is trying to tell her the mm -hmm. entire time, that your life is just going to be hard now. People are going to be dicks to you no matter what. And it fits all the dumb internet trolls because no matter how good the show could be, they're all still going to be the same way. But, yep. um, so, uh, it's so, oh, <laughs> the B plot, I guess, uh, is, it might be my favorite one yet. Um, I, I need, I need to find the name of the actor who played Mr. Immortal because he, <laughs> He did really good. Um, oh, okay. He's played by um, David uh, Pascasi, who was just in um, the book of Boba Fett as um, Makshay's uh, major domo. Basically, okay. he's like he, he he's just a worm. He's okay. he's one of those one of those slimy, spineless creatures. Got it. So Dizzy was like, we got another spot for you. But, uh, so, to start off here, Mr. Incredible, I had to look him up because I'm like, for some, no, Mr. Immortal, I'm like, that name sounds stupid familiar. And I can't figure it out why. I know I don't know a ton about this character, but I know that I know something important about him. And it, it hit me as soon as I opened up the Google search page. I am from Wisconsin. I live in the Great Lakes area. He is the leader of the Great Lakes Avengers. Oh. <laughs> Like, I can't remember a ton of their names, but another one is Big Bertha, which is just literally an overweight, like, circus freak girl. <laughs> like, I think there's another one, like, The Wall or something else. So, so Bunch of was, weirdos. So this is, like, the C team. It's, like, the F team. <laughs> no one cares about them. Hold on. I need to... Hold on. Let me see here. I, I'm, uh, imag I'm imagining Justice League International, but way, but way worse. 
Okay, hold on. Great Lakes. Okay, let's see here. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. So, Great Lakes Avengers Marvel Six One Six database. Let's see what we got here. Le oh my gosh, the lightning rods. This is just boof. Okay, so you got correct. After an accidental discovery, he could never die. Craig House began fighting crime. He soon realized the world could never as much as he had a team. <laughs> this is so lame. So, meeting at a local YMCA, <laughs> it's <laughs> mortal is joined by Big Bertha, Dinosaur. <laughs> it didn't hit me till I said it, but that's a pun on Dinosaur. Um, is she actually... Yeah, she is. It it's a pink pterodactyl woman. Oh, <laughs> um, oh doorman, flat man, and leather boy. <laughs> Together form the Great Lakes Avengers, who are the sister teams in the West Coast and the East Coast Avengers. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> you you need to see dinosaur. <laughs> I can't be the only one that saw this. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it didn't hit me until I said the name out loud that that was a pun for dinosaur. You are my ageless love, and as long as I'm here for us, this country centuries slip by like moments of time. Don't fear me. Like, but anyway, so... So, Mr. Immortal. Mr. Immortal. Uh, oh! You're for... I don't know if I... Montiverse! Hi, by the way! <laughs> yes, cringe is exactly right. Thank you for looking in. Um, he had the, you might have had that list up there. You might have very well beat me to it, but I wasn't looking over there. Thank you. Um, uh, I need to wash my big Manny. Be right back. I need to wash my eyes with chlorine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we get this case to where as it's going along, Mr. Immortal is just brain dead that where he is literally showing that he is breaking numerous amounts of laws where he's been married, I believe they said eight times and faked his death every, every time single time. Marriage, including when they start dogpiling on him in the office about how dumb he is. He just recreates that meme where the guy opens the door and just jumps out the window, but he just dives out of it. It, it is. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but I love it. Oh, it was the best. I'm like, wait, is this court just done? Like, I, I didn't know if he was exiting the episode. And then <laughs> they did this exactly how I wanted them to. Because they, they did all that. And then I'm like, there's going to be some dumb bribe where he's going to try and get out of this. And they start going through all the different um situations that he was in <laughs> and they're all like wait he's got a vast amount of wealth for living for forever that makes sense but then i'm like if they do not complain that they are getting equal shares when they have been not been equally screwed over by him a i will not believe this in a realistic manner and b they will have lit they will have missed a giant opportunity. Literally two seconds later, <laughs> they're like, I was with him for 18 years. What did she get? <laughs> also, Mandy, hold on. Where is it? Oh my gosh. The one thing about having three monitors. <laughs> <laughs> if only we all could, man. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, also, I love how we're seeing more of Mallory. Yes. Because she is, well, she, like, that, that actor has always been a, a great um, addition to any cast, but specifically for the show, I love her, her dynamic with, um, with Jen and now Nikki. Yes. The, this supporting cast is unbelievably good. And like they're stealthily all fantastic. Like you don't realize you forget about it until you get back in the season. Of like, no, all of you are great. It's to the point of where I'm legit upset Pug wasn't in this episode. Like right? I like, where was he? I'm like, I want just two seconds of him. 
everyone is great. I miss them when they're not on screen. Like in the other ones where it was like, they're all good, but it was like, I'm okay with them. I was just like, how come he didn't get his moment? Where was he for two seconds? It's Oh, the dialogue in this was written so well. And um, what was the name? Do you remember the name of the guy who you said was um whole, uh, uh, Jen's love interest? Um, which which? Oh, Josh. Yeah. No, like the one you found in comics. Oh, his last name was Lightfoot. I think. Hold on. Cause, oh boy. Did they go out of their way to make Captain Dreamy over there and Jen get along real well? Because I like really like that guy. Their chemistry was fantastic. And if that uh, is just Wyatt, a- Wyatt, Wyatt Wingfoot, Wyatt Wingfoot, okay. Um, but this, but this guy, this guy's name is is Josh, and yeah, he really, he really is just he, he's like the the ideal guy yeah he was awesome he's like oh your shield that's really cool but i like jen (laughs) she's just like wait huh you exist what (laughs) there's people like you that like both (laughs) not just muscle jocks that want to have sex with a freaking greek goddess Uh, but oh yeah those two were just fantastic and (laughs) just I'm loving how they are perfectly... See you next time, bud. Um, they're perfectly okay with letting um, Titania make an absolute fool out of herself. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that That's basically all she all she has done this, like, the series. But it's fine because uh, Jamila Jamil does a good job at playing this character. <clears throat> but also... She's not really that great of a villain. She's not. And what I'm going to ask you is, um, this entire time, she's been unbelievably pissed at She-Hulk ever since she, like, stopped her in the courtroom. And now it's just, like, she's trying to take everything from Jen, and Jen is showing point blank every time that, like, I don't care about you. Just stay out of my life and we won't have issues. Do you think they're going to try and face turn Titania? After she just got royally embarrassed this last time, I can I can see this going in two directions. Either either she does um, do a face turn and say um, she does this like big apology video, and you know she becomes like her best friend, mm-hmm. or she quadrupled that da- she quadruples down and ends up aligning with uh, whoever is after her blood. Part of me also thinks that um, in the next episode, she's going to get another letter claiming that she assaulted her at the wedding. I I could see it. Because I was like, no one has a camera unless she throws the first punch. And technically, Titania in front of everyone did kick her first. That's true. Even though Jen was lunging at her. But uh, uh but um so yeah there was all that um but uh yeah this again these episodes just freaking fly by they, and they, they do they do and we got the intelligentsia kind of hook in where they found it on the computer and all these people want to kill Jen and then <clears throat> and the sad part the really sad part is I love how unbelievably true to life honest the show is where they were like uh Nikki was just like we have to tell Jen these guys are out to kill her oh this that and the other thing and then um oh now her name's escaping me Mallory Mallory Mallory's like, no, they're a bunch of internet trolls. They're just saying that stuff because people say that stuff. They do. Yep. Every time something doesn't go their way, no, we need to burn that director's house and shoot his family. Like, that's literally how people are now. So, like, Mallory's taking it as a regular human would this because it's actually how people are now. And then Nikki's like, no, it's my best friend. I need to tell her. The, the, 
the dialogue in this is very it, it it's just perfect perfect for for the story that they're trying to tell yeah and now it's gonna be really weird when manly is possibly like oh shit someone's actually trying to kill jen <laughs> and now they have little dinky needle didn't do it the hypothermic destructionator that they've got in there now so we still we still don't know yet who is I'm less thinking it's Hammerhead now. <laughs> this is a little bit too above board for Hammerhead. Um you don't you don't think it could be you don't you don't think it is leader, do you? Man, I could very well see that this is people that are working underneath a direct order from leader. I could see that at the very end of this episode, or not episode, this um, season, or if they're going to make the series, whichever, um, that there's going to be some subordinate underneath him that is a minor level dude that's associated with the leader in comics, which, oh man, I want to say there's some girl named Monica something that is associated with the leader because she was in the Marvel Avengers game. Oh no, that girl's associated with MODOK. Oh, I I think I know who you're who you're talking it's about. It's Monica something, right? Um, but anyway, you're gonna have some subordinate underneath the leader that is a not well known person, but it's enough to where they could get his name in a Marvel show, and they could say they got that character in is running the show, and then when he either succeeds or fails to get it, he's gonna be like, "Here you go." And he's handing it to the leader. Um, Monica Rappuccini. Rappuccini, there we go. That's who I was trying to think of. But I think that's how it's going to turn out. I don't think they're going to point blank show us the leader unless it's an end credit scene. Just like the same thing with Carol. Oh, yeah. It, it, they'll, they'll probably save that. They'll probably save the reveal of leader for for the last episode. But I have a feeling, yeah. Um, but I'm I'm honestly not opposed to like... I, I, I know she's I know she's generally associated with Modoc, but if if um if the sci if the scientist supreme is the the villain who's after Jen's blood is that, that what would, Monica is yeah okay her, um her moniker is um scientist supreme because I never finished the Avengers game <laughs> sorry guys I quit out about seventy five percent of the way through I tried. But, like, she was still just called Monica and was, like, probably three-quarters of the way between MODOK becoming giant head MODOK. He was still, like, partially weird. But the Scientist Supreme, huh. I did not know there was a Scientist Supreme, but I really like that because it, it's just someone that had a hard-on for Stephen Strange where they're like, no, science is better. I like that. <laughs> That's actually really cool. I actually really, really, really like that. Huh. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And if if this does lead to more of like more people from intelligentsia, then that that'll be pretty cool. Because did you say Modok is in intelligentsia? Yep, he's he's one of the um, one of the people in the group. Okay, because that would then not make sense. You could either just be answered to him, or or did we have someone cast as Modok? Uh, good question. I swear there was something about him the other day. I know that they have that um, Modoc series with Pat Oswald. For some reason in my brain, I thought they actually casted Modoc, but I could be totally a hundred percent making that up. Um, let me see. But anyway, she could just be a lackey. And oh yeah, that's right. Modoc will be um, will be in Ant Man the Wasp, uh, Quantum Man the Wasp. Okay, but no casting. No, no casting, but he okay. he but will he make an appearance. Okay, cool. Then we got that settled out. So that would make sense. Man, you're gonna have Kang and him in there. I wonder if Kang's just gonna be in there for a little bit, and that Modok's the main villain. Would that wouldn't that be awesome? That would be awesome, but that would also be setting up that like the new Hydra is Intelligentsia. I feel be okay with cool. that. Because you'd have... And <laughs> Let's rack up the baddie list again. We've got Intelligentsia, the Tracksuit Mafia, 
Fisk's organization. Um, oh, what's their name? The Ten Rings. <laughs> Got like four villain groups going. And, and, once, sure and, 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 once, and once we get mutants, we've got um, the Brotherhood of Evil. Brotherhood of Evil and Intelligentsia. It's just, it, we're literally just watching living comics now. It, it's it, it's getting a lot, but I'm... I can still keep track of it. There is so much going on. There is three movies a year. They're going on six TV shows that have so much stuff going into it. But I can keep track of all of it. Yep. Versus same. when it was CW, they had only five TV shows going, but there was so much crap that they skipped in there with unbelievably not needed filler that I had to tap out on almost every season trying to remember all of it 13 episodes in. Yeah, I, I, I kind of went um, cold turkey on the C on all CW shows like last year because I'm like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. It's unbelievable how all this is tied together. We can keep track of it, and it's not tripping over its own dick. Like, <laughs> you, you had it. You just felt like you needed 19 shows. Even after the, I remember, do you remember when the head of CW was like, no, we're not doing any more superhero shows. Except for Stargirl and the one that we added. I can't remember. Oh, that's when they took on Supergirl from CBS. Yep anyway yeah no this is really good this was gen related content not she hulk related content and i appreciate that same because there's not there... gonna be a lot of them that they could do this with not a yeah. lot of other heroes uh now there are three episodes left um i'm o i'm only really asking out of obligation but when do you think we'll see daredevil um man i don't know because um, here's the thing. Jen is saying she never wants to wear that getup. The superhero suit. She mentioned it in this episode. Mm -hmm. She's only got three episodes left to wear the damn thing. So she's still at this wedding getting hammered. We saw that she didn't answer the phone. And I'm going to guess she didn't bring it with her. So she would then have to get back to her apartment at some point. So that could be another episode. So it's going to be in the second to last of the last episode, in my opinion. All right. I'm guessing she's only going to wear it for one. I, I I bet, I bet she dons the, like the superhero costume in the last episode, but we may see Daredevil for, they, they, they said he's only appearing in one episode, but I think he might show up in two. It is because, and it's like if she only wears the suit in one episode, then it has to be the one with Daredevil, because mm -hmm. in the footage, she's wearing it. Well, you know, you wonder if they're assholes and they're like, "Yeah, Daredevil only shows up in one episode, but Matt Murdock is in the other one." That's <laughs> see, that's, that's that's the thing. Language is important. <laughs> If I was running the show and I knew that it was only technically Daredevil in one, I would so freaking say that. Daredevil's in one, but Matt might be in five. <laughs> I would so be that person. That language is important. It is. Remember Word that, is kids. Everything. Especially now that you have alternate, you have split, that you have secret identities, you have to do it that way. <laughs> But yeah, all right. Um, this is getting a little long, but I had a lot of fun. We had a lot of stuff to talk about this episode. So yeah, this is getting to be really good. We've only got three episodes left. When is the next um series start? Uh, the next series. Um, let me take a look. Yeah, it's not Armor Wars because they're shooting that. Um, is it Secret Invasion? No. Uh, let's what is, what see. The next Television. Because they're Armor Wars, Iron Heart, I believe they're shooting. Um, we, ha we have uh, the, the TV special, Werewolf by, oh, Night. Werewolf by Night. That will be October 7th. Okay. And then 
after that is the Guardians holiday special, which is allegedly December 2022. Oh, wow. So we don't have another show coming for the rest of the year. Yeah. And then Secret Invasion is um, early 2023. Wow. So this is the last one of the year. Holy crap. But like, like I said, we have the specials and um, Wakanda Forever is in November. That is true. So, we'll so we 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 still like we still have something every month. Yeah, absolutely. And something's gonna end up dropping in January. I wouldn't doubt if Secret Invasion is late January. Late January, early February. Yeah, I would assume because they're already showing full fledged edited out trailers of that. That that means it's coming soon. Yeah. But all right, let's get on out of here. Mike, where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at CaptainK42. You can check out my quick thoughts on letterbox.com slash CoachK42. And you can follow Renegade Pop Culture on Facebook and Twitter at RenPopCulture. You can also find us on YouTube, on Podchaser, on the Banana Meter. Listen to all of our podcasts on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. And last but not least, everything can be found at RenegadePopCulture.com. You can escape, so do we. Absolutely. And you can find me every Red Organized Zero. I'm currently streaming The Last of Us. And I'm going to try and finish that before October comes because in October, I'm either going to be doing mostly horror-based stuff or if... Hold on. I need to check this. At the ass end of the month, I'll be playing Gotham Knights. So Nice. Yeah, we'll be doing that. All right. Until next time, everybody. We will see you all later.